thank the most high for taking the things of the world off of my shoulders. Thank you, Father. Love. Oh, oh, oh. I rise up and sing. Ears have been heard. Shalom, 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 it's because shalom, Mr. Disciple y'all, and I'm back with part two of using the keys of the kingdom to fulfill the promises of y'all. Um, like I told y'all, it had to be in parts because the rock be speaking y'all. Um, y'all be thinking a lot of times I be having notes. I have notes, but a lot of times it be rock led that he just begins to speak through me as I'm before y'all on this camera. So, like I always tell y'all, you know, take every word of confirmation to the most high. But we on part two, and today we're talking about obedience and uh, the power of obedience using that key and how it manifests and the things that it brings about. So, let's go ahead and word of prayer, and we're going to dive into this word. Abba God, I thank you on this day. I thank you, y'all, for choosing me as your humble servant. I thank you right now, y'all. Uh, for this word of obedience because it is a powerful word and we as your people we all need obedience we all need to be following you and being obedient to what you are saying and what you are trying to do in our lives so i just pray y'all that not only the audience but i myself y'all take this and graft the word into my rock and examine myself and my obedience and apply the scriptures that you have given unto me, y'all, for your people, and to apply them to my life. And I pray right now, y'all, that your people be edified by this word and that they receive this word unto you and they take it back to you in confirmation. They receive confirmation from you and your son, Yahushua Mashak name. Hallelujah. So like I told y'all, we're talking about obedience today. And um, get your Bibles. Let's go ahead and whip it open. I got my uh, phone because I got multiple Bible apps like I told y'all in the past. And we finna go ahead and dive into this, what the Most High shared with me when it came down to obedience. Um, we're going to be going to Deuteronomy chapter 4, starting at verse 1. For those who got a Bible, you got your, whatever you may be using, Deuteronomy chapter 4. We're going to go ahead and get into this word. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Now, therefore, hearken, O Yasharel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them that ye may live and go and possess the land which Yahuwah of your Abba giveth you. So this first verse is talking about basically is Moses, Moshe, speaking to Yasharel, telling them about the statutes and things and judgments. And he's teaching them on what they should do. Um... And this is obedience. You're being obedient. If you be obedient, basically, so far what he's saying is if you be obedient, then you shall possess the land. That's the reward. So remember when in part one we talked about, you know, the reward that you may get of things that you may not receive the full promise, but you may receive a reward. Well, their reward at this time for being obedient and which was still one of the promises um, that was spoken was the land. So going to verse two. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of Yah, your Lord, which I command you. Your eyes have seen what Yahuwah did because of Baal Peor, for all men that followed Baal Peor, Yahuwah thy Lord hath destroyed them from among you. So now he's talking about those who are disobedient. So now he's, he's telling them, hey, Y'all see what happened to those disobedient ones, right? Those disobedient ones that didn't follow and listen to the Most High, that, defo that decided to follow out the bell per or and look at what the Most High did. Y'all seen and beheld all this. He destroyed them. So they literally seen what obedience can do and what disobedience can do. So using the key of obedience, what it brings about the possession of the land and disobedience brings about death or being destroyed. So, um, let's go on to verse 4. But ye did cleave unto Yahuwah, your Lord, are alive, every one of you this day. So, now it's talking about those who were obedient. That did follow the obedience. Look at where you are today. Your reward. See, that's what I'm saying. Some, some rewards, you know, we take for granted. It be the small things. Just having life alone is a reward in itself. For being obedient, because being disobedient may put, may put you out of alignment with the Most High and may place you into a predicament or a situation where you are now in trouble. So this is what he's telling them. Verse 5, 
Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as Yahuwah, my Lord, commanded me, that ye should that ye should do so in the land where the ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all of these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is is a wise and understanding people. Now, first in verse five, Moses is tell, telling y'all how he was obedient. So now he's being obedient to the Most High. He's using the key of obedience or whatever to what? Spread the light unto what? The rest of Yasharal for their understanding. But then verse 6, it says, basically, you know, with them doing this, therefore, I'm going to read it. Keep therefore and do them for this is your wisdom and your understanding. See, now, using the key of obedience, you now get what? Wisdom and understanding. You now possess gifts. You're getting gifts as reward. And these not just simple gifts because they have understanding and wisdom is, is great. Because not everyone has wisdom, not everyone has understanding. How we know that? Because he said right here, in the sight of the nations. Meaning that the nations didn't have no wisdom. They didn't have no understanding. But through your obedience, you are being granted wisdom and understanding from the Most High. A reward. And then it says... They will hear these statutes and they will say, surely this is a nation that is a wise and an understanding people. See, now you are looked at because you're using this key of obedience. You are looked at as high and mighty. You're looked at as above and not beneath. You're looked at as the head and not to tell. See how these scriptures are now manifesting? All oh, that came about through obedience. Because the rest of the nations didn't have it. And see, you have to remember, when you have something that someone else doesn't have, they now look at you in a bigger and higher light. It's just like in today's world. And I'm not talking about the battle of Yashrael and the believers. I'm talking about the, the public, those who are, you know, just living their life. They look at the people who have money and big houses and and all these other type of so-called fancy things. They look at them as better than them. They look at them as above them. They look up to them. But see, they didn't. They got theirs through being obedient to Hasatan. See, they still use the key of obedience, even through iniquity, to receive a reward from. They're, you know, God or Lord or whatever he want to be or whatnot. But what I'm showing you, and no, I'm not giving them no, you know, giving them any cloud or anything of that nature. What I'm showing you is that this key, even when being used correctly, brings about rewards. So let's continue. I'm going to drop down to verse 40 in the same chapter. And um, it said, Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, what Jehovah thy Lord giveth thee forever. And I only wanted to read that because the important thing I wanted to show was that with also with keeping these commandments, being obedient, they what? That them and their children that they may as prolong thy days upon the earth. See, even with obedience, it gives you more time. It gives you more life here to fulfill your purpose and promise. See, a lot of people want more life here just to live this earthly experience. No, when you're given more time here, it's supposed to be still to continue the statutes and the laws of the Most High, being obedient to Him. For you can still get a greater reward as well as still receiving rewards and, and these promises that he has made. But even when you extend more time of obedience here, using that key of time here on earth, now you have more time to help fulfill the promises of Yah through obedience. Because obedience is giving you more time here on this earth. It just showed you in the scripture. But we're going to go into our next scripture and let's go be... Um, 1 Corinthians 
chapter 13, verse 1. Actually, no, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That is not the next scripture we're going to. The next scripture actually is going to be John chapter 14, verse 15. My apologies. John chapter 14, verse 15 is where we're going next. Um, Because I, I want to show y'all this power of obedience and um, what it does and what it brings about. So, John chapter 14, verse 15. And it says... If ye love me, keep my commandments. Now, this is Yahushua. And he's speaking, telling them, if you love me, keep my commandments. So now he's sh now showing them through obedience, using the key of obedience, it, it's going to bring you into a more powerful revelation, the more powerful key, the most powerful one of all. Love. If you love me, You'll keep my commandments. And we're going to continue reading because I'm going to expound more on um, showing how obedience brings about a bigger um, key than itself, which is love. So verse 16. And I will pray that I, I will pray Abba and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Now, we all know the comforter is the Ruach HaKadosh. Verse 17. Even the Ruach of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye shall know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Now, look at this. He's now talking about um, you love him, keep his commandments, and keeping his commandments, he's going to pray to the Father to send what? The Ruach HaKadosh. Now, sending the Ruach HaKadosh will also bring about another Ruach, which is truth, which the world don't have, is another gift that you have received. See, the small things start add up to the big things. But let me continue. Verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while in the world seeth me no more, but ye shall see me because I live, ye shall live also. At that day, ye shall know that I am my father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So now he's showing you that those who love him also love his father. He's showing you, you know, basically he ain't going to leave you. He's going to the father. Basically, he's talking about the interceding to the father on our behalf. As long as we follow and keep his commandments. Because he's going, basically what it is, he's going to Abba Yahuwah and saying, look, we got this contract. Now, anybody who follows me, obeys these commandments, and does the right thing and be obedient, these is the ones that love me, but they also love you because I got this from you. And that's basically what he's saying. So, drop down to 22. Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Yahuwah, how is it, or Yahusha, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Yahusha answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and he will come unto him and make our abode with him. See, now he's, he's now breaking it down, saying, you know, that because you follow his words and love him, he is the mediator. And you're going through him to get to the father. The father is going to come back unto you. That's basically all what he's saying. Just, you know, I'm just summarizing things. 24. He that loveth me not, keeping not my sins, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the father's which sent me. So now he's telling them that this is not from me, but this is from my father. So whether you believe me or not, my father spoke these words and I'm speaking to you what my father said. So if you don't receive me, you ain't receiving my father. We're going somewhere. Just keep on following along. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the comforter, which is the real cockadash whom the father was saying in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So now we're talking about the different gifts and rewards that you get for being obedient. And it all started with you keeping the commandments and loving Yahushua. And he's now telling you because of this, my father is going to come to you, but he's going to come to you in a different form because me and my father are the same, but he's going to come to you 
through the comfort of what this Durak HaKadosh. And then when he comes to you, he's going to remind you of everything that has been spoken and everything that I have spoken. And he's going to bring it back to your remembrance. So verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, and ye would rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you that before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. So now we're going back to faith. Before we even get to the faith or whatever, I want to speak about peace. He's leaving peace with us. Another gift, another reward that we get for being obedient. But with this obedience, it brings about love. So now he's saying, you show me that you love me. I'm going to show you that I love you. I'm going to always give you peace. So that's basically what he's expounding and saying and showing them. But then at the end of verse 29, that will all come to pass that ye might believe, that ye may, may have faith. We already spoke about faith. But I'm showing you how these keys connect together, how they work together to fulfill your purpose, to bring about the promise that was made from the Most High to us. So, I'm going to end at that. And now, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 13 because I wanted to show you that with obedience, it brings about the most powerful key, which is love. And with love, just some of the things that we get we get the Ruach HaKadosh. We get peace. And it also, the, it shows and gives us all these things to bring about our faith, which is another key. And all these keys work together to bring about promises that was made by Yahushua, promises that were made by Yahuwah, and bring about things to help us to fulfill our purposes within the promise. But 1 Corinthians 13, and we start at verse 1. Though I speak with tongues of men, of angels, and not have love, I know it says charity, but charity means love, so I'm just replacing the word. I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and I have not love, I am nothing. He is showing you that the most powerful key written now is love. You can have those other things that he mentioned. But if you don't have love, you ain't got nothing. But in order for you to have, to show the trueness of the love, you have to be what? Obedient. But let's continue to verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profit me nothing. So you can walk about and do works. But does that mean that the works that you were doing were out of love, out of obedience to the Most High? No, because you can do works of yourself. And this is what he's saying. You can do all these works of yourself through gifts. But if these works are not through the obedience of what the Most High commanded and you doing that is showing him love, it means nothing. So let's continue on. Verse 4. He says, love suffereth long. Now, I'm going to continue reading with these things because all of these is bringing about different gifts that help uphold our walk, to help us fulfill the purpose. But it says, suffereth long. Long suffering, which is one of the fruit of the spirit. And it's kind. What love is, ha has you to be kind. Love envieth not. Love wanteth not itself and is not puffed up. So it allows you to operate in the love that the Most High won't. It, it's, it's saying that if we love Him, it, it helps us to operate in that love to other people and not be prideful. Not to sit here and think I'm better than the next person. But to be loving and to kind to them. Verse 5. Does not behave itself unseemly, seeking not her own. Is not easily provoked, thinking not, no evil. So you don't act crazy. See, this is what love does. See, when you be obedient to those commandments, these commandments help you stay in line with all these things. And when you stay in line with all these things, you are showing love. 
You're not easily provoked. Yes, there are things that may happen to us that may provoke us, but when you truly are obedient and you say, you know what, even though this person did this to me, I'm going to still follow what the Most High said. I'm going to follow what he said. And because when you do that, as time goes on, things can happen to you and it won't even phase you. Because you will always have the love that you have for the Most High first. Thinketh no evil. If you truly love, remember, Yahushua said, people think on the physical nature you have to do something. But no. When you conjure up something in your mind and in your heart, you have already done it on the spiritual nature. That ain't love. Because guess what? They are mind demons. They are mental demons. That even though you may conjure up something in your mind and your mental, now you have spoken it mentally and you can send that to that person's mental. Now their mental is being attacked because of what you thought about them. People think everything has to be spoken or physical. But then the Bible says he's able to do exceedingly what above what we ask or think, meaning that our thinking is a weapon mechanism. Our thinking is a way to bring about life. Y'all better, better get it together. Verse number six. Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. We ain't supposed to be around here saying that we love the Most High His commandments and we rejoice in evil. No, we're supposed to rejoice in things that are honest and of truth. And what is the truth? Yahushua is the truth. So we're supposed to rejoice in Yahushua. Hasatan is of evil, so we shouldn't be rejoicing in Hasatan. We're supposed to rejoice in Yahushua. How do we rejoice in Yahushua? By showing that we actually what? Love him. How we show him love? By following his commandments. Verse 7. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity, or in this case love, never fail. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. He's telling you, love will never fail. So that means love will never fail. That means obedience. In order for your love not to fail, that means that your obedience doesn't fail. If you're always in obedience to the Most High, your love will never fail. But the moment you stop using that key of obedience, your love will fail. Why? Because you're no longer loving. But you're now acting what puffed up. You're thinking evil. You're being prideful. You're being envious. These things be, be able to manifest because now you're no longer walking in the... This is the whole thing of the fruit of the Spirit and the fruit of the flesh because you're no longer walking in the fruit of the Spirit. When you start doing those things, you're walking in the fruit of the flesh. But it all started with obedience. That key and that key birthed about a bigger key, which is love. Now, we continue on and I'm going to drop down to the last scripture, verse 13. And it says, And now about his faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these three is love. So he's telling you, love is the greatest key that we can have. But in order to get love, we have to first be obedient. So using that key of obedience is powerful. It is a key. Not, it's not small, but it is a much smaller key than love. But when we be obedient to the Most High, and we can operate in that love, we are not able to manifest some of the promises that have been spoken. Because we are in alignment with the kingdom. We have the Ruach HaKadosh in us. We have the rock of truth in us. And like I said in part one, when we start to take in all of these different keys, whether they're a small key or it's a big key, smaller keys make a bigger key. These things allow us to fulfill the promise, to fulfill the prophecies that have been spoken to us. Because what we don't realize is that prophecy that was prophesied to Abraham was prophesied to us too. 
because we are in the loins of Abraham. So if we were in the loins of Abraham and we are the descendants, that same prophecy was spoken to us. So guess what? Abraham fulfilled his part of it. We have to fulfill ours. But in order to fulfill it, we have to be obedient. Obedience is key. And with obedience, it brings about love, which is a bigger key. And love brings about a lot of other things. Not just the things that we went over here in this, this lesson. Love brings about a lot. As y'all read, as we read in chapter 13. But all throughout the Bible, love is everywhere from the beginning to the end. Love is present. So this is part two. And there's going to be a part three and possibly a part four. I don't know. It all depends on how the most high moves and everything can get compounded to part three. But the rock is done talking. That's all I have for this video. Until next time, it's the Sapper of Yah. I'm out.